Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our webinar today, Understanding the Connected Car. I'm Fred Jacobs with Jacobs Media. Bob Kernan of Jake Apps uh, is here as well. We're really excited to be here today. We have broadcasters from around North America, around the world, from commercial radio, public radio, Christian radio, all connected, and we couldn't be happier to host you. We have a couple of Twitter handles on the screen, as you can see, mine and Jake Apps. So uh, if you want to comment, good, bad, or otherwise, on the webinar today and what you're thinking and feeling, that would be great. Uh, we're going to uh, share with you what's happening in the connected car space, how it intersects and impacts the world of radio. Uh, most people uh, in the radio business uh, were ahead of the curve in a number of areas. I think we saw streaming coming, smartphones coming, uh, social media was kind of an obvious one. But the connected car is one of these areas that has really snuck up on radio. And it really stands out today as perhaps the biggest challenge on the one hand and the biggest opportunity on the other for radio. So we're going to talk today about what the auto industry is thinking we're going to share some Tech Survey 12 data about what consumers are thinking, and we're going to boil down our observations about how trends in the auto industry will impact the radio business. And then Bob from Jake Apps has some exciting news to tell you about how we're solving some of these key problems that impact radio's place in the dashboards of millions of cars. Uh, I want to walk you through our trajectory real quickly. For those of you who may not be all that familiar with our companies, uh, Apple opened up its App Store July 2008, just eight years ago, hard to believe. Uh, the iPhone had come out a year earlier, and while it was successful, it was not the runaway success that it became once the App Store came into being, and that's what really fueled the iPhone's monumental growth. Jake Apps was born 100 days later on the premise that smartphones would indeed be the next big thing. And our research at the time showed that radio had lost a lot of its portability and that the iPhone really represented a great chance for radio to regain that mojo, if you will, via uh, apps custom designed for individual radio stations. Eight years later, Jake Apps has produced more than a thousand apps on both the iOS and Android platforms. Uh, and so um, we were all excited about our accomplishments, and in early 2009, we figured, hey, we're software developers. We're going to Las Vegas and CES, the biggest convention on earth. And as we wandered around the North Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center, we saw a scene that looked an awful lot like the Detroit Auto Show. There were big displays from Mercedes, from Ford, from Toyota, from Chrysler, but nobody was talking about what was under the hood. They were all talking about what was in the dash. And from there, we struck up a relationship with Ford. And uh, just a few short years later, in 2014, uh, Ford named us their house developer to convert and adapt their apps to the Sync Voice Command System. There's a picture there of Julius March Wiki, uh, who uh, was one of the origin, original founding fathers of Ford Sync, talking about uh, our alliance and our partnership at CES. And then from there, we started up the Dash Conference three years ago, a really cool conference here in Detroit, very much a mashup of the radio and the automotive industries. So that's how we got here, and one of the reasons why the car is so important is that it owns a couple of big number ones. The car is the number one listening location for broadcast radio, really across all generations, and the car is also the number one revenue category uh, for radio many, many years running. So the car impacts every department in the radio station. But if radio is to remain really healthy in cars, whether it's from the programming or the revenue side of the street, we have to understand just how fast the auto industry is moving. Now, while it's true they still manufacture vehicles in essentially five-year cycles, everything has really been accelerated in order to keep pace with what consumers in the business community really want out of cars. Uh, alliances and partnerships are forming very, very quickly. Billions are being invested in research and development, and things are really moving very, very fast. Radio has to embrace this change. It has to understand it. And then it really has to develop its own strategic plan to keep pace with what's happening in the automotive space. But in order to really do that, 
we have to really get in the heads of the car makers, understand their mindset. We spent the last seven years, as I mentioned before, attending conferences like CES, uh, Telematics Update, the Society of Automotive Engineers here in Detroit. We've interviewed hundreds of OEMs, auto manufacturers, and their tier one suppliers, executives, engineers, and marketers trying to understand what is important to them and what are they thinking about. I mean, how do they envision how connected cars interface with consumers who have become so addicted to instant access to information and entertainment on their smartphones and other digital screens in the vehicle? And how does telematics, which is really the name for the space, fit into their overall game plan? Well, speaking of fast movement here, uh, you can really see how the connectivity movement in cars is going to amp up very, very quickly. Now, these are all estimated projections of how connectivity is exponentially going to grow. And as you can see on the far right, by 2020, Scotiabank and BI Intelligence say that 75% of cars shipped globally will be connected in some way. And when it comes to connectivity, what is the plan from the automotive point of view? Well, to a great degree, they're thinking about the Internet of Things. And you've probably heard a lot or even read a lot about the Internet of Things. And it really boils down to this, devices talking to other devices. Now, I can tell you at CES this year, um, the, IO, uh, the IoT or Internet of Things uh, uh, framework is really exploding. And one of the great examples was at the LG exhibit. Yes, as you might expect, they had beautiful 4K TVs, but they also had an, an amazing array of other smart devices, including washing machines, dryers, refrigerators, security systems. And yes, of course, the car is also part of the Internet of Things as well. It has become a smart device. And so when the auto, automakers are making their plans, here's a really great quote from Marcy Claiborne, who's the chief information officer at Ford. And as you can see here, this, the, the Internet of Things is really what compels the automakers to start thinking outside the dash and really outside the car. But from a radio standpoint, most broadcasters look outward and we see the car and the dashboard uh, and it's true, we are part of the dashboard ecosystem, even though it's changing and becoming more crowded. And we think that the automakers are totally focused on the dashboard as well, looking at radio and all the other content areas. But in reality, they're really beginning to look outward at the Internet of Things, ways in which their cars will communicate with other ecosystems and devices. And this could be our homes. This could be stores, heating, cooling, other appliances, uh, health information, security systems, cars communicating with other cars, and cars cars even communicating with people. That really is, to a great degree, a lot of what the auto industry is focused on at this time. Now, what about consumers? What are they thinking? Well, to find out, we have our Tech Survey 12, which is a web-based mega survey comprised of 39,900 plus respondents, mostly members of radio station databases. In fact, we had 245 stations across North America participate. Interviews were conducted in January and February of this year. And one of the areas that we investigated was people who told us that they had already bought a car in early 2016 or planned on buying or leasing one sometime this year. We gave those people a list of possible new car features and asked them to tell us which are the most important ones. And so there's really good news here if you're in radio because the number one must-have gadget in the car is the AM FM radio. Now, quite a bit behind is the smartphone connector, Bluetooth, CD player, still up there, uh, GPS, and other features. But in yellow, we have designated connectivity features there just to give you an idea of how desirable they are. Again, the good news is that AM FM radio is number one. But that said, nobody walks into a new car showroom and says, hey, I want to drive that new Ford Edge with the AM-FM radio. They expect it to be there like standard equipment. 
Now look down near the bottom, and I just made a little asterisk marker next to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They are barely available at this exact moment in time, but even back in January and February, we had 16% of our respondents who indicated that this was an important feature for them to have. And to give you an idea of the trajectory of connected features from Tech Survey 11 in 2015 to Tech Survey 12 this year, you can see that for the connected features like Bluetooth, Wi Fi, and the media system itself, there clearly is a greater desire this year than last year. And that very much is a reflection of consumers realizing that they can get a great media experience in their cars. Uh, on the far left, we're looking at people who actually have an in-car media system like Ford Sync or Chrysler Uconnect. And you can see from last year to this year, it's gone from 18 to 20 percent. So there's growth. But what we're also learning is that unlike some of the early years when connected cars first came to the market and it was mostly baby boomers leading the way, connectivity now covers the entire span of consumers from teens all the way up to seniors. And one of the reasons why is that automakers have made it a big priority to appeal to millennials. Of course, that's the generation that may not be as interested in buying or leasing a new car as their parents or grandparents. And so the idea here is to encourage them to purchase or lease cars. And the way you do that is by offering connectivity all the way down to entry-level vehicles like, say, the Ford Fiesta, the Chevy Spark, the Honda Fit, the Kia Soul. So with all this connectivity, which translates to a whole lot of media options in the dashboard, how is AMFM radio holding up? Well, we ask drivers to think back to an average weekday in the car and to tell us how they use various media sources. And here's how the share of the car percentages actually worked out this year. Good news for radio, right? A 66 share of usage while people are in their cars. Satellite radio and personal music collections are tied at 10%. And then we see Pandora, podcasting, audiobooks, all in around that 2-3% range there. So a very good report card for radio. But before you get out the party hats and the champagne, we also took a look at this same consumption pie chart, but among people who own connected cars to see if there's a difference. And in fact, there's quite a difference. AM FM radio drops from a 66 share to a 55 share. And the big winner is satellite radio, which doubles its share from 10 to 20. Interestingly, all of these other dimensions here from Pandora to Spotify to podcasts remain relatively flat. But satellite radio clearly has an edge there. So we wanted to get a sense among those who have an in-car media system, what specific impact has it had on their AM FM radio listening? So we asked them to tell us, since you've had your system, are you listening to more AM FM radio, less, or about the same as you did before? And 18% are saying they're actually consuming more broadcast radio. Good news. But more than a fifth, 22% there in blue say they are actually listening less. And so to really confirm the data that we just showed you on the previous pie charts, we asked this group, those listening less to radio, where is their listening going? And again, there's satellite radio on top. More than half these people say satellite radio is the main beneficiary, followed pretty closely by people who are talking on their newly paired phones. Then comes personal music libraries. But interestingly, mobile apps are beginning to play a role here as well, whether they're mobile apps brought in from smartphones or they are mobile apps embedded in the dashboard themselves. So apps are clearly becoming a more important part of the dashboard ecosystem. There's been a lot of complaints about connected cars. J.D. Power put out a study last year that indicated that sizable percentages of connected car owners don't even use many of the built-in features. So the question is, how do people feel about their connected cars? And the reality is 
they really like them quite a bit. In fact, four of every 10 say, I love my connected car, and almost three in 10 say that they like these systems. So that really is a positive referendum on connected car systems. And when we actually look at some of the more granular data here by demographic groups, we can definitely see that men, progressively younger consumers, uh, ethnic respondents and larger market residents are all more bullish about the connected car. So how big a role is technology playing now in new car buying decisions? Well, it's actually playing a lot. Tech really does matter. A year ago, McKinsey uh, measured uh, consumers who agreed with the statement, I would switch to another manufacturer if it was the only one offering a car with full access to the applications, data, and media that I like. And then in one year, that percentage has almost doubled from 20 to 37 percent. The automakers realize just how important this is in the buying and decision-making process. And here's a different study, this one done by uh, Accenture, that essentially says a lot of the same things. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, we're looking at people who indicated that uh, their demand for uh, their next car is driven by performance, right? That used to be the measure. And then uh, on the far right-hand side, it's technology. And you can definitely see that this chart leans very, very heavily toward technology. And we can tell you anecdotally, because we've actually spent a great deal of time in car dealerships in the past few years, if you could be a fly on the wall in a new car showroom, listening to the conversation between consumers and car salespeople, they're not talking a whole lot about automatic braking systems or horsepower. It's about, is there satellite radio? Can I pair my phone? What apps work in this system? So there is no question that technology are really, is really driving uh, these conversations. One of the big issues with the connected car is that there is little to no standardization across all the different platforms from manufacturer to manufacturer. I drive a uh, Ford Edge with my Ford Touch, and I have, in fact, mastered the system uh, extremely well. But last week, I rented a Nissan Altima in Philadelphia, and I'm right back to square one. So there's no question there is a lot of confusion out there um, with all these different systems from a consumer point of view. And that's why Apple and Google are moving into the dashboard. They're really taking advantage of that lack of standardization and cons consumer confusion. And they have created dashboard ecosystems that essentially mimic your smartphone screen, transferring the look and feel of your phones to the dashboard display. Um, we'll see in a moment. Most of the car companies uh, have definitely uh, given in, if you will, and included Apple and Android systems uh, in their dashboards along with their own proprietary platforms. And there is a dirty little secret to all of this. This is Dave Sargent, who is with J.D. Power. He was a speaker at Dash last year. And so his whole belief, uh, based on their research, as you see here in the quote, is that people are more loyal to their phones, to the type of phone they carry, than the type of vehicle that they drive. And this is one of the big reasons why Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are being so rapidly accepted by the automakers who just 18, 24 months ago were certainly on the fence and quite a bit reluctant to install both the Apple and Google systems. Today, they're beginning to actually market uh, these Apple and Google products. As you can see here on the screen, these are all spots, uh, television uh, commercials and videos for Chevy, Volvo, and Audi. And, and you can definitely see that over time, uh, there's definitely going to be more activity in, in this direction. So when these systems are activated, as you can see here on all three of these screens uh, depicting Apple CarPlay, you can see your apps, but AM FM radio is more removed than ever from the driver's view. And so you might be kind of thinking, well, dude, where's my car radio? And that's really a question that Bob Kernan is going to answer in just a few moments. 
uh, when he talks about some of the things that we're doing at Jake Apps that will enable radio to get right back into the center of the dash. But I want to switch gears for a moment and talk to you about a trend in transportation that's growing and will, without a doubt, really impact what consumers are listening to while they are on the road. And that is shared mobility, shared uh, rides, driving services. And like so many other trends, it has started with millennials and it's working its way older. Uh, so earlier in the year, GM announced a $500 million uh, investment in Uber competitor Lyft, and that's an indication that the automakers are acknowledging that while this trend in smart mobility threatens to disrupt their businesses, perhaps in serious ways, their strategy is to actually embrace and maybe even own these trends rather than have it undercut their businesses. GM has also started a ride-sharing service called Maven. Um, it's a program that is already in multiple cities and communities, including more than uh, 100,000 people just down the road here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And not to be outdone, Ford is investing very heavily in a series of 25 experiments that uh, are all designed to really envision what transportation is going to be like in the year 2025. Uh, shared cars and even bicycles are all part of the shared mobility uh, experiments. Again, another indicator of big investment by the automakers. But of course, all this raises the question about how will consumers entertain themselves in these changing shared mobility, shared ride ecosystems? And in fact, Uber, who we haven't mentioned yet, but clearly the big dog when it comes uh, to these services, is putting together alliances with music services. Uh, Spotify uh, came, came around in late 1914, again, combining shared mobility and ride services with music. Uh, if you've ever used uh, Uber or Lyft, you know you have to live with the driver's tastes, unless, of course, you ask him or her to change stations or turn the radio on or off. Spotify really changed all that, allowing the consumer to control their music while in an Uber vehicle. And then just yesterday, Pandora announced a new alliance, a streaming application in Ubers that will be ad free. And again, I think this really acknowledges the importance of in-car listening as well as the rapid rise in a trend that will most certainly impact radio, especially in markets where services like Uber and Lyft become extremely popular. Uh, and this is something that the radio industry needs to address and perhaps an area where the industry has fallen behind. And then the last trend, and this one is a little bit around the corner, but coming up even faster than anybody thought, and that is autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars. Google has really been the leader in this space. That's the Google car uh, that you are looking at there. But many, many automakers are now investing billions in the autonomous driving uh, uh, craze, if you will, from Ford to Toyota to Cadillac. More and more vehicles are going to be equipped in just the next few short years uh, with autonomous services, with the goal being an accident-free world. And what's really interesting is that this isn't just being limited to cars. There are startups forming in the autonomous front that are really fascinating, like this one. This is Auto. And this has been formed by a couple of Google execs, one from Mapping and Navigation and the other from Autonomous. And what they're doing is creating these kits, these conversion kits for semis for $30,000. And you can see a demonstration here in this picture that is happening in California because when you think about it, the easiest drives are these long, monotonous drives on interstates, perfect for semis and this allows the driver of the semi instead of being the skipper to really be more like the admiral um, keeping an eye on the road perhaps during the day but at night being able to actually uh, catch a few Z's while the semi actually just uh, drives through uh, Interstate 80 uh, if you will uh, for several hours uh, at night. 
The former head of Eastman Radio, this was back in the day when there actually was more than one rep firm, Bill Burton used to say that a car is a radio on four wheels. Well, here at Jake Apps, we're more likely to say that the car is a 3,000-pound smartphone. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bob Kernan, COO of Jake Apps, our mobile app development company, who has some exciting announcements about how we're enabling radio to ensure its rightful position on the dashboard. So, Bob, it's all yours. Thanks, Fred. I want to thank Fred for sharing his tremendous knowledge of the connected car space. This is such an important space for radio, and uh, he and Paul really saw it coming. So at JCAPS, this has been a real priority for us. We've spent the past six months working on this, and if you include our great partnership with Ford, much, much longer. The result is that we feel we finally cracked the code. We are really excited to announce today that as part of our App Everywhere program, our apps will now offer support across three major in-car platforms. So even in this new reality of the connected car, we can keep your station front and center in the automotive dashboard. So we'll be offering support for uh, Android Auto, uh, Smart Device Link, which is formerly Ford's App Link and which now includes Toyota, and yes, Apple CarPlay. This means that in over 100 models from 35 automakers, your radio station can live beside pure plays like Pandora and Spotify. That means that this is no longer a technology battle, it's a content battle, and that's one that radio can definitely win. Let's take a look at each of these platforms and how your station app can compete there. First up is Android Auto. This is the Android Auto interface. It should look pretty familiar to you if you're an Android user. Uh, you can see that Riff is right there besides beside Pandora and Spotify. When the user chooses the app, it opens and you can see the station logo. When music is streaming, it pulls in album art. Uh, your station's podcasts can also be easily accessed through the car's touch screen. And here you can see the podcast playing as well. Next is Smart Device Link from Ford and Toyota. Uh, what you're looking at here is Sync 3 from Ford. Ford was the pioneer in this space, and they really took their lumps for being first. Uh, but the new Sync 3 is truly outstanding. Uh, I'm getting a new Ford myself here in a couple of weeks, and I'm really excited to have Sync 3 in my car. Sync 3 incorporates Smart Device Link, which also allows enabled apps from the user's smartphone to be accessed from the dashboard. Last year, Ford made SDL open source so that other car makers could integrate it into their systems as well. Toyota was the first to take advantage of this, but we've heard rumblings that there are a number of others that are coming along. And of course, Apple CarPlay. Uh, we spent four months here at JCAPS working with Apple, and the results have really been worth it. Uh, in our first conversation with the Apple team, they asked us, why do radio stations need to be in CarPlay? Aren't they already in the car? So obviously there was some education that had to happen there. Uh, which we were happy to do. But as you can see here, uh, this is our director of business development, Alex Bernstein's brand new Volkswagen Tiguan. Uh, and the radio is that little button up there in the upper left that says band. So as you can see here, um, that's not really where you want to be if you're a radio station. But with Apple CarPlay, you can be right there next to MLB Pandora TuneIn. And I can tell you that when we first developed our very first uh, radio app for Jake Apps on the iPhone, and it was for WRIF, it was so exciting for us to flip open our iPhones and see that Riff app sitting there next to Shazam and Pandora and the mapping program and everything else. And we had that same rush this week when we actually took a look at Alex's Apple CarPlay, and there, in fact, was a radio app front and center on the Apple ecosystem. This is really a big deal for radio. Uh, and just like with Android Auto, uh, the podcasts are also available, uh, made available right there in the interface. And that was really what got Apple's attention. When we were talking to them and they were sort of not understanding why uh, radio needed to be in CarPlay, we said, well, you know, there are all these podcasts that the stations are doing. And at that moment, they really had the sort of, oh, now we get it uh, kind of moment about the whole thing. And this is another reason why we have long maintained that 
apps need to be more than just a representation of your stream, that for truly mature radio brands that offer podcasts, videos, and other features, that's really exactly what apps are all about, and both the Android and Apple ecosystems incorporate some of those other features here, as you can see. So beginning in July, uh, we will be making this extension available via our V4 apps and some custom apps as well. Um, so this will be available to radio stations, internet broadcasters, and podcasters. Um, and while enabling your app for Android Auto and Smart Device Link is easy, with Apple, your company will have to agree to an extra set of terms and conditions from Apple. These mainly have to do with agreeing to their safety standards, but it is a slightly more challenging process, but we will guide you through it, uh, and your station will get their rightful place on that connected car dashboard. So if you're interested in getting this for your station's apps and want to learn more, please contact us to set up an appointment, and we can discuss all the details with you. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here. I'd like to give uh, major credit to the Jake Apps team for working so hard uh, on making sure that uh, our radio station apps can be, in fact, converted to be parts of these extremely important dashboard ecosystems. The connected car movement is one of the most exciting things that we've been involved with as a company, and it really is great to uh, see the Jake Apps team crack the code, if you will, and really work on behalf of radio to make sure that we have our rightful dominance in vehicles. We really appreciate you being here today. The information is there on the screen. Thanks so much, and we hope to talk with you soon.